Hi, welcome to Budget MTG Decks. All magic fun, all cards under a dollar. I'm David and this is my brother in arms, Reed. Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about a fun and effective EDH deck you can build without breaking the bank. Now today's deck is going to be a gambler's deck with extreme highs and extreme lows. Mm. As with all our decks, there's one additional build room that is that all cards are under a dollar in price with the exception of the commander. So this makes for very cheap decks. Um, let's take a look at the commander. Narset Enlightened Master. Before ever becoming a planeswalker, or I mean in a completely different timeline than the one where she became a planeswalker, Narset was Khan of the Jeskai Way, a Tarkir clan of martial artists that prized knowledge, meditation, and strategy over strength. Plagued as an adolescent by her wandering mind, in a race of people known for their concentration skills, Narset was originally instituted as Khan as a puppet leader by the Jeskai elders who were bent on controlling the clan from the shadows. They assign her a monk by the name of Shin Tan as her personal bodyguard, but he is really designed as a way for the elders to keep a close eye on Narset. Narset is afflicted by visions of imaginary worlds during her meditation. She hopes to learn from an ancient dragon named Ugin a way to restore bounds to present-day Tarkir. While studying, a Kirin comes to Narset and leads her to a planeswalker named Sarkin Vol, on whom she is able to sense Ugin's spirit. Sarkin teaches Narset about planeswalkers, and in turn, Narset helps to calm Sarkin's frenzied mind. Forming a team, the pair travel together to Ugin's tomb when they are ambushed by Zergo Helmsmasher. Narset fights Zergo off while giving Sarkin time to escape. Narset is killed by Zergo during the battle, but not before Sarkin is able to enter Ugin's nexus which leads us to the events of Fate of Forge, wherein Sarkin tries to alter the timeline to restore order to Tarkir, as well as a chance to save Narset. Our own souls are the greatest obstacles to enlightenment. So today we have an awesome commander for you. We have Narset Enlightened Master. Now for six mana, of which one has to be blue, one red, and one white, we get a 3-2 with first strike. Now, another ability that she has, which is very important, is that she has Hexproof. And we love it when our commanders have Hexproof because it makes them so difficult to remove. Finally, Narset's ultimate ability, which is why we're using her as our commander, is whenever she attacks, we get to exile the top four cards of our library, and we get to cast uh, all non-creature spells that are there for free till the end of the turn. So the role of this commander is going to be to cheat in very powerful non-creature spells. So the types of cards we're going to need is uh, 24 epic effects. Uh, this means non-creature spells, of course, which are epic. Then we have 16 enablers. Uh, this means uh, stuff that we can put on Narset to make her do her work even better or maybe protect her. Then we have 10 utility cards, we will see later. We have nine mana ramp cards to make sure Narset goes onto the table earlier. And we have, of course, 40 land cards. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, what would be the ideal turn progression here? Well, ideally, uh, turn 1 we will just cast a land, or we don't cast it, we just put down a land. Turn 2, a land and a mana ramp, a mana stone actually. Turn 3, also a mana stone and a land. And then turn 4, we will cast the commander. It's an ideal scenario, of course. Turn 5, we will uh, put some enablers on our set to make her do her work even better, or to protect her. And then turn 6 onward, we might even cast an epic spell from our hand yeah. or some more enablers. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Um, those are, that is the turn progression. Uh, let's start with the epic effects. Epic effects are the spells we're hoping to cast for free with our set. So they have a really high casting cost, but they also have some really epic effects. So we divided those into control spells and token spells. We're going to start with Ignite Memories for 5 mana. Target player reveals a card at random from their hand, and then it deals that much damage to its to the opponent's life total, and that much damage is its converted mana cost. But it doesn't seem like a lot, because it's 5 mana for that, but it has Storm. Yeah, Storm means that when you play the spell, copy it for each spell played before this turn. So this actually means that when a Narset exiles 4 cards, you cast all those cards, well maybe there are some lands in there, but uh, and then you cast this one, and this means that Ignite Memories will be cast five times in a row. And uh, especially in Commander, there are some high mana cost cards in people's hands late game. So uh, this will actually do tons of damage. Yeah, well five times would be, for example, let's say you cast a spell just from your hand. 
then you exile, you know, you do combat, you exile those four cards, then you do uh, those, all those four, uh, the three of those are different spells and Ignite Memories is the fourth, then it becomes five times. And of course, yeah. if you cast more small things, you could have it six, seven, who knows how many times you're going to be doing damage. Especially late game, it's going to be doing tons of damage because people are going to have only the highest converted mana cost cards in their hand. Uh, next spell is Flame Wave uh, for seven mana with uh, quite a high uh, red, very intense red uh, requirement. But it doesn't matter because we'll probably be casting it for free. Flame Wave deals four damage to target player and each creature he or she controls. Yeah, so some uh, mass destruction. Then we have Alpha Brawl, also some mass destruction for eight mana. Target creature an opponent controls deals damage equal to its power to other creatures that, comp that opponent controls. Uh, and all those other creatures do damage to the creature you chose. So uh, probably every creature your opponent controls will die. Exactly, if you chose, uh, choose correctly. Then we have a really fun multiplayer card. It's uh, Reverse the Sands for uh, 8 mana. It states redistribute, redistribute any number of players life total. Which basically means, okay, you've got, I've got 15 life and uh, that person has uh, 20 life and that person has 6. You can say, okay, can you take the 6, I'm going to take the 20, you're going to get the 15. So all the life total quantities must remain the same, but you can distribute them as you feel uh, is best. And it's actually really handy because at the beginning of the game, you're going to be losing a lot more life than other people, since we're not very defensive. So it's nice to be able to cast this later on and then return the favor to whoever dealt the most damage to you. Exactly. Game. Then we have Divine Reckoning for 4 mana. Each player chooses a creature he or she controls and destroy the rest. So of course you will choose Narset, which will be your most important creature. Maybe some of your tokens will die in the process, but that's not really a problem. So be it, that's what they're there for. It's very similar to Fell the Mighty for 5 mana. Destroy all creatures with power greater than target creature's power. So of course we're going to choose Narset and all creatures with power 4 greater are gone. Then we have Mass Calcify for 7 mana. Destroy all non-white creatures, so probably even your tokens will survive this, because most tokens we have will be white. True. Temporal Fissure is next for 5 mana, we get to return target permanent to owner's hand, so you know anything, anything goes, that's a permanent. Uh, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it also has Storm, which as we discussed before means we're going to be triggering it a lot of times, you could be returning 3, 4, even 5 permanents back to your uh, opponent's hand. Yeah, and they have to cast them again, of course. Then we have Sea God's Revenge for 6 mana. Return up to 3 target creatures your opponents control to their owner's hands. Pretty handy. And it also has Scry 1, which actually has some synergy in this deck. We get to look at the top card of our library. We can put it on the bottom or top of the library. Um, of course, uh, this is very handy when Narset attacks, because we get to choose at least one card to be gone or to stay there. Yeah, exactly. Then we go to Aether Gale for 5 mana, return 6 target non-land permanents to their owner's hand. It's very powerful, but if there's, there are no 6, if there's only 5 non-land permanents, then obviously you can't cast this spell. So you really need to have 6 targets, but if you do, then you're sitting pretty. Yeah. And we have Inundate. Did I say that correctly? That is correct. Yeah. For 6 mana, return all non-blue creatures to their owner's hand. So now set will stay there. Probably your tokens will get exiled. Yeah, but can you imagine if you're playing all these other opponents who don't have blue stuff, everybody is going to be uh, in trouble, and you're not because their set is blue. Then we have Exclusion Ritual for 6 mana. It's an enchantment that when it enters the battlefield, we get to exile target non-land permanent, and players can't cast a spell with the same name as the exiled card. Okay, that doesn't matter because if you target somebody's commander, they can still recast it because the commander won't be exiled. It will probably go back to their command zone. But the good thing about it, why this is better than, let's say, an Oblivion Ring, is that should somebody destroy Exclusion Ritual, they will still not get their uh, non-land permanent back. Then we have Spine of Ish Sa for 7 mana. When it enters the battlefield, it's an artifact of course, you get to destroy target permanent. Uh, it has something else, when it is put into a graveyard, you can return it to your hand, but that probably won't happen. No, probably not. Mostly just, it's, you can just destroy a permanent, which is just very strong. Then we have Argentum Armor for 6 mana. Uh, equipped creature gets plus 6 plus 6, and whenever equipped creature attacks, destroy target permanent. That's the reason why we have this card in here. It's got a equip cost of 6, which is very high, but most likely we're going to be casting this for free with our set, and then all we have to do is pay the 6 mana to equip it, and then next turn we're going to be attacking. Uh, Narset's going to be doing tons of damage because plus 6 plus 6, and we get to destroy a uh, permanent every turn. Very nice. Yeah. Then we have Razia's Purification. 
for 6 mana. Each player chooses 3 permanents he or she controls, then sacrifices the rest. Um, of course you only cast this when Narset is already there, because after that, each turn you will get to uh, cast 4 cards for free. This really helps, so um, yeah, that's, that's the, how we are going to use this. Yeah, the thing is, uh, if you cast this with the Narset which is not on the battlefield, uh, you're going to have to sacrifice everything, you might have three lands left over, you're going to be in big problems, big trouble. Uh, what happens if you do have Narset on the battlefield, you're going to choose Narset and maybe two lands, everybody else is going to go down to uh, their three lands, because they have to sacrifice everything else, and how far ahead are you going to be if you're going to be attacking every turn, casting those four spells for free, and they're still on three mana, going up to four mana, uh, they're going to be so set behind, it's, it's a game winning, uh, game winning card. Uh, then we go to the last one of the control spells, that is Volcanic Offering for 5 mana. Essentially what it allows you to do is to destroy two non-basic lands and destroy two creatures. Uh, the first non-basic land you choose, the second non-basic, somebody that, of your choice gets to pick. And uh, for the, doing the 7 points of damage to a creature, you also get to pick one and somebody else gets to pick another creature they can do 7 points of damage. But for both things, so for both uh, non-basic lands and the 7 points of damage, uh, they can't be yours, so you're always going to be in a good position there. Those are the control spells. Let's have a look at the tokens. First of all, we have Empty the Warrens. For 4 mana, you get to put down 2 red goblin creature tokens, and it also has Storm, just like we discussed before. Yeah, so most likely at the beginning of the game, uh, I've, ca I've cast it before for 4 mana at the beginning of the game, you know, just to get 2 little tokens to block. Later on in the game, it gets a lot of synergy, you're getting 6, you're getting 8 uh, goblins out of it, it's not too bad. Then we have Moon Silver Spear for 4 mana uh, and equip cost of 4. Equip creature has first strike. That's really redundant because Narset already has first strike, so it's pointless. But whenever equip creature attacks, put a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying onto the battlefield. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that's pretty big, of course. Then we have Assemble the Legion for 5 mana. We get an enchantment. At the beginning of our upkeep, we get to put a counter on it, a master counter it is. And uh, then we get to put down a 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature token onto the battlefield for each muster counter on Assemble the Legion. Yeah. So this is pretty handy, especially uh, of course against the Wrath effects. Uh, well, you will get uh, some extra tokens and it will just increase every turn. Yeah, it gets out of control really quick. Then we have one of my favorite cards, Stolen Identity for 6 mana. That's a sorcery. We get to put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target artifact or creature. So basically the best thing on the battlefield, we get a copy of that. Plus we're going to cipher it onto Narset, which means next time she deals damage, we get to do it again. And hopefully if Narset's unblockable or people don't block her, we're going to be able to do this every turn, picking the best thing on the battlefield every time. Yeah, that's big time, of course. Then we have Conqueror's Pledge. For 5 mana, we get to put down 6 one, one white core soldier creature tokens. Um, mostly we won't have the mana to kick it, but even when Narset casts it for free, we can't even kick it. So it will be 6 uh, white Actually, soldier Actually, no, we can. Uh, you may pay an additional cost as you cast this spell, and since that's Narset true. allows us to cast a spell, when we cast this one for free, we can pay the 6, and then we're kicking it. Yeah, that's true. Double, double nice this spell. Then we get deployed to the front for 7 mana. We get to put down uh, as many 1-1 one, one white soldier tokens onto the battlefield as there's creature on the battlefield. So if anybody's playing tokens, then we're getting a ton and ton of soldiers. Then we have a very big card, Clone Legion, for 9 mana. For each creature, target player control, so you get to choose an opponent mostly. And you put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature. So you just choose the biggest army on the battlefield and you will have that army too. Yeah, that's super nice. Uh, then if you're talking about wanting a lot of creatures, we have a Storm Herd for 10 mana. But it seems like a lot of mana, but we're going to be casting it for free. We get to put down uh, X11 one, one white Pegasi uh, creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield, where X is your life total. So if you have anywhere... Uh, still above 20 life, which you probably will when you're getting this. You're going to be getting upwards of 20 one one flyers, which can be used very nice as chump blockers, but can also do a ton of damage when attacking. Those are the epic effects. Now let's have a look at the enablers, which allow Narset to do her work so well. We divided the enabler cards into counter spells. The reason why we have counter spells is to make sure that Narset doesn't get wiped by. Uh, the wrath effects or her instants or artifacts get destroyed when we don't want them to be destroyed. 
Then we have some protection cards, which make sure that our set can attack with impunity, either making her unblockable or indestructible, so we don't have to worry about her, uh, or we can't attack because she might die. And then we have uh, extra trigger cards, which allow us to um, have Narset's effect of looking at the top four cards and casting the non-creature spells for free, having that done multiple times. Let's start with the counter spells. First off, we have Swan Song. For just one blue mana, counter target enchantment, instant or sorcery spell, its controller puts a 2-2 two -two blue uh, bird creature token onto the battlefield. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, then we have Negate. For two mana, we get the counter target non-creature spell. So once again, just anything that's going to wrath us or be a problem, we just get rid of that. Yeah, maybe something that gets rid of an enchantment on Narset, of also, course. Yeah. Instructable enchantment could be. Then we have Muddle the Mixture. For two blue mana, we can counter target instant or sorcery spell. It also has Transmute. Uh, for three mana, we get to discard this card and search our library for a card with the same converted mana cost. Could happen, but mostly we will just keep this in our hand. Yeah. Then we have a counter spell, just for two we get to counter a spell, so this could also be used against uh, commanders or other creatures that could cause us trouble. Then we have Deprive, for two blue mana uh, we get to counter target spell, but we do need to return a land to our hand. Yeah, it doesn't really bother us that much because by the time that our set's on the table, when we're going to be wanting to counter uh, spells, uh, we're going to be casting stuff for free anyway, so that one land that we're behind is not a big problem. Then we have a Cancel for three mana, counter target spell. Very basic. And we have uh, the next cards are the protection cards. First off, we will have Aqueous Form. For one blue mana, we get to enchant Narset, of course, and she will be unblockable. Um, when she attacks, she also get to scry one. So we get to look at the top card of her library, put it on the top or the bottom. Pretty handy. Yeah, and because it, both things happen, so both her attack trigger and uh, this trigger. Uh, happens simultaneously. We can choose in what order they go. So we first scry and we see whether that first card is something we want to cast for free within our set. So it's, uh, it's unbelievable synergy. And plus you can't be blocked anymore so you can just attack with impunity. A card that works very similar to that is uh, Steel of the Godhead for three mana. Uh, as long as Enchanted Creature is white, gets plus one plus one in lifelink. And as long as Creature is blue, gets plus one plus one and is unblockable. That's the reason why it's in there. It pumps our set a little bit, mostly makes her unblockable, and a little life gain is, uh, is not bad. Could come in handy. Uh, we won't. We will be losing a lot of life early on in the game. So against very aggressive, fast decks, we could have a problem. So it could be handy to gain some life uh, as fast as possible. True. Sure, True. Sure. Uh, then we have indestructibility for four mana. We just enchant in our set, and she's indestructible. Now we can attack, and people can block, but it doesn't really matter. Exactly. Then we have gift of immortality for three mana. We get to enchant her. When she dies, we get to return her to the battlefield. And we get to return a gift of immortality at end of turn to our hand. No, it's actually attached to Narset. Attached to. Yeah, so that, that means that we don't have to recast uh, Gift of Immortality. So it's, it's ba we're basically making her indestructible as well. Yeah. Except if somebody manages to do a wrath in between, but it gets complicated. A card that is the way you just described is actually Fool's Demise for five mana. Uh, when the creature dies, we get to return Narset back to the battlefield. And we return Fool's Demise back to our hand, so then we do have to pay 5, but it's, I think it's still a pretty good deal. Yeah, pretty good. Set. Then we have Spectra War. For 5 mana, we get to enchant our sets. You will get plus 2, plus 2, and protection from all colors. This effect does not remove auras. Yeah. Could come in handy. She will be stronger and she can't be blocked, well, except, of course, by artifact creatures. So very nice. Yeah. So what you really want is you want to have first, uh, you want to have Steel of the Godhead and Indestructibility on our set. Then you want to put Spectre Ward, and then we're in magical Christmas land, and and nothing can stop you anymore, except that they just kill you. They just end yeah. your life. That's true. Then we go to the extra trigger spells, and we first have Relentless Assault for four mana. Untap all creatures that attack this turn. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main. Long story short, you just get an extra combat phase uh, with Narset because you attack with Narset. So you basically, instead of doing four cards from the top of your library, you're getting eight. Yeah, that's pretty big, of course. Then we have World at War for five mana. Basically the same, but this one has rebound. Uh -huh. So uh, next turn, you will be casting it for free. Again, Again, talk about casting stuff for free. Unbelievable. Then we have Breath of Fury for four mana. Uh, we're going to enchant a creature we control. We're going to enchant one of our tokens, because we're trying to also produce a lot of tokens uh, during this game. We're going to put one of our tokens, enchant it with this. Then, when enchanted creature deals 
combat damage to a player. We get to sacrifice that creature, add attack and breath of fury to another creature, and then we get another combat phase. The beauty is we can keep on doing this as long as we can keep on attacking and dealing damage with our tiny little tokens. And of course, in our set, we'll go along for the ride and keep on triggering. Now you have uh, probably the best extra trigger card, Stryonic so Resonator. Uh, epic card and commander, of course, for two mana, we get a destroy on a resonator, an artifact, and for two mana, then we can copy target triggered ability we control. So we copy uh, Narset's ability. Yeah, doesn't even need to attack again, we just, uh, we just copy it. Awesome. Those are the enablers, now let's have a look at the utility cards. We divided the utility cards into filter cards. These cards allow us to uh, go through the top of our library before we attack in our set to make sure we really get the juicy targets. And we divided those into hinder cards. And these are the ones that are gonna hinder our opponents so that we have a better time than they are on the battlefield. We're gonna start with Omen for two mana. Look at the top three cards of your deck and return them in any order. You may choose to shuffle your deck, they draw cards. You look at the top three, you say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna draw this one. Those two are gonna stay back on the top. You say, this is all, these are all lands. I'm not gonna be able to use this. You know what? I'm just gonna reshuffle the whole thing and hope for the best when I attack with our set. Yeah, then we have Dream Cash for three mana. Draw three cards, choose two cards from your hand and put them on either the top or the bottom of your library. So basically we just draw all the lands, we keep them in our, keep them in our hand and then we put that on top of our deck the most powerful spells we have in our hand. Yeah, very nice. So even things that you started out with earlier, you can start, you can pop them back on top to cast with our set for free. Then we have long-term plans for three mana. It's an instant, so that means when you attack, we're gonna be able to cast this one. Look through our library for a card, the most awesome card we, we want to cast at that point in time, and then we're going to put that, that, that card third from the top. And that's fine because we're going to be um, showing the top four cards of our library. We're going to be exiling those, so we're always going to get it. So next we have the Hinder cards. The first one of those is Smoke for two mana. No player may untap more than one creature during his or her untap phase. Now this is of course huge because you only want to untap uh, Narset of course and all other opponents will have big problems with this card. Yeah, it's lovely if you're playing against the Reach the Redeemed, for example. Yeah. The, they don't like that. Then we have Dream Tides for four mana. Creatures do not untap during their controls and tap phase, but each non-green creature's controller may pay an additional two during his or her upkeep to untap that creature. We uh, don't really have green creatures, so that means we are going to be paying two mana to untap in our set, and everybody else is going to be in a world of hurt. The scariest creatures on the battlefield are sometimes green, the tramplers, big time tramplers. Yeah. So they uh, can't untap them anymore. No. Then we have Feroz's Ban. For six mana, creature spells cost two more to play. Yeah. Since we won't have creature spells except for Narset from the command zone, yeah. we will not have any problem with that. Do not cast this before you cast Narset. Rookie mistake. Then we have Fade Away for 3 mana, it's a sorcery, it says that for each creature that player's controller pays 1 or sacrifices a permanent. Now, if you're casting this right, your opponent's going to be tapped out, so they're going to have to make a choice, either they wipe all their creatures or they're going to have to start sacrificing their lands, which is going to put them behind. It is a nightmare and it's for everybody, and if you just have 1 mana left open, you can just tap that to pay for our set. Then we have Dissipation Field for 4 mana. Whenever a permanent deals damage to you, so to us, uh, return it to its owner's hand. So that's going to give some big problems to your opponent's creatures when they attack you. Mostly it's a very political card, so people say, okay, I can attack you, or I can attack uh, this other person. If I attack you, I gotta recast the creature, but if I attack this other person, I'm just doing damage, I'll just attack the other person. And then you're like, phew, good. Uh, then we have Dismiss into Dream for seven mana. It says that each creature your opponent's control is an illusion, and when this creature becomes a target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. So this even yeah. means the spells or abilities they control themselves. Yeah. So when they, when they target their own creature, it will also be sacrificed. So with, for example, the ability uh, equip cost of an artifact, they can't do that anymore. Uh, they can't cast beneficial enchantments on themselves. They can, uh, yeah, it's just a nightmare. It's a nightmare. But it's great for us. No, yeah. it doesn't count for our creatures. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Then we have Omen Machine for 6 mana. Players can't draw cards anymore. Well, of course, we won't be drawing a lot of cards. We will exile them from the top of our library. Yeah. And at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. If it's a land card, we put them to the battlefield. 
Otherwise, the player casts it without playing its mana cost, if able. Yeah. Now, why would this come in really handy here, yeah, David? Well, the reason why is because, well, as you said already, we don't draw cards, so we can still exile the top four. We're going to be casting those anyway. We have really expensive things, so if we if we show the top card at the beginning and it's a land, we put it down. If it's a really expensive spell, we get to cast it. And other people are going to have a more balanced mana curve, so they're going to get, sometimes they're going to get something good, sometimes they're going to get something bad. And it really shuts down, something very important, commander decks that go to town with drawing tons and tons of spells. And we don't like those when we're playing in our center. We say, you know what, everybody just play one spell, except for us, because we're going to be casting another four. Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> those are the utility spells. Let's have a look at the mana ramp. For the mana ramp cards, we basically only have artifact stones, which are going to be tapping for a particular color of mana or colorless mana, and they're all... Two mana. Why? Because we want to get these things out on the battlefield as soon as possible. We want to be someone's casting multiple ones later after turn four, for example. We're going to start with Marble Diamond, Sky Diamond, and Fire Diamond. These all come in tapped and give us either a white, blue, or red mana, respectively. Then we have Azorius Signet, Izzet Signet, and Boro Signet. They all come in for two, of course, and they uh, get to tap for one colorless mana, so you can only use it when you have. Well, first off, three mana. And then they give us two mana of uh, the colors white and blue, or blue and red, or red and white. Yeah, exactly. Then we have Talisman of Progress, also for two mana. We can tap for a colorless mana, or it can give us a white or a blue mana, but then it does deal one point of damage to us. Exactly. Then we have Prismatic Lance for two mana. Uh, we get to tap it and we get uh, one colorless mana. We can also late game just uh, pay one mana, tap it, and add one mana of any color to our mana pool if yeah. we really need yeah, it. Yeah, color fixing, otherwise it just gives us an extra mana. Then we have Mind Stone, last also for two. Also taps for colorless mana, but we can also pay a mana, tap it, sacrifice it, and then draw a card. So when we don't need the mana anymore later on, it actually could become something much better. Uh, those are the mana ramp cards. Let's uh, have a look at the lands. We divide the lands into six plains, seven islands, seven mountains, and 20 utility lands. First off, we have three lands that give us either red or blue mana. They all enter the battlefield tapped. First off, we have Izzet Guildgate. Then we have Swift Water Cliffs. This one also gives us a life when it enters the battlefield. Then we have Caldera Lake. Uh, when we need red or blue from this land, it costs us a life. Otherwise, it will just give us a colorless mana. Yeah, then we have uh, the the lands that give us either red or white, that's Boros Guildgate, uh, Windscarred Crag, which gives us a life when it comes in, and Scab Land, which will cost us a life if we want a colored piece of land, uh, mana. Then we have uh, the lands that give us either white or blue. First off, we have Azorius Guildgate, Boreal Shelf, and Coastal Tower, and then we also have Sejiri Refuge and Tranquil Cove. Now the last two also give us a, little, a life when they enter. That's true. Then we have Mystic Monastery, also comes in tab, but it gives us either a blue, red, or white, which is exactly the colors we want. Exactly. Then we have the Vivid Lands, the Vivid Meadow, Vivid Creek, or Vivid Crack. They uh, give us uh, respectively white, blue, or red mana, and they enter the battlefield with two charge counters, so we can also choose to give us a mana from any color two times. Pretty sweet. And lastly we have, uh, actually not lastly, but now we have the last of the mana fixers are Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds, which when they come in, we can tap them and sacrifice them to get us any basic land. Yeah, Tapped yeah. on the battlefield. Yeah. Then we have Temple of the False God. We get to tap it for two colorless mana, but we can only activate it if you have five or more lands. Little risky in our gambler's deck, of course. Exactly. Then we have Rogue's Passage. It gives us one colorless mana, but we can also pay for, tap this land, and target creature can't be blocked this turn. That's not very risky. It's very nice with our set. Yeah, very nice. Then we have Slayer's Stronghold, also taps for a colorless mana, but we could also pay a red and a white, and then target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and vigilance and haste until end of turn. Yeah, mostly it's there for the haste. Yeah, I'll get it to use. Yeah. Um, those are the lands. Let's have a look at the conclusion. In conclusion, this deck is a lot of fun. I mean, you never know what you're going to get. It is really a gamble. It's high risk, high reward. Once you get Narset on the table, you're going to start attacking with her, and after that first attack, you're going to have that feeling, okay, what am I going to get? You don't know. We're going to look at those top four cards. We're going to exile those and see if we get super powerful, epic effects that change the entire course of the battlefield. 
Or if it just fizzles and you get to put down a land and a mana rock. You don't know. It's highs, it's lows, you gotta live on the edge. On the plus side, Narset is also very difficult to remove because she has Hexproof and there's a lot of spells in there which also protect her before you start attacking. So mostly, there is some reliability, but just what you're gonna get every time she attacks, that's random. And yeah, it's pretty exciting, I gotta say. Yeah, very nice. Uh, of course, Narset is a little bit of a glass cannon. Uh, if she gets removed, you will have a problem. So sometimes you will need to wait until you have eight mana against some control decks maybe, when you have, of course, also a counter spell in your hand to protect her one time and then maybe next turn you will give her indestructibility or something like that. Uh, so, well, it could be, could give you some problems, but uh, as my colleague just said, it's high risk, high reward. If it gets through, it will be high reward. You yeah. just have some epic effects and your opponent will be like, what? am I going to do about this? Yeah. Just nothing. This is not the deck for people who want to be careful and, no. and play defensively. No, this is people who go, all right, you know what, I'm casting their set. Is anything going to happen? No, okay, I'm attacking, everybody's dying left and right, and you're cackling maniacally. Or uh, it's turn three, and there's a super aggressive aggro deck that's pounding on you turn after turn, and you're dead in a few turns before you even got to cast our set. You know what? That's the risk that you're going to take playing our set, but when you when it connects and you pull off those top four cards and it's four amazing things that remove five creatures, destroy lands, artifacts, everything's gone, uh, you're flying high. You're flying high. It's also pretty affordable, right? Yeah, it's just uh, below $33. Uh, that's including the commander and including all land cards. Uh, we did this calculation on magiccards.info uh, and chose all the medium prices on uh, a lot of sites in, in, uh, in the world, so we can just uh, really buy this deck for under $33. That's right. And if you don't want to live dangerously and risky, then what you do is you press that subscribe button because then every time that we make a new video, you're going to know about it or you're going to get a notification. So it's very reliable. There's no risk whether the quality of the videos is going to be very different from one week to the next. We're trying to bring very consistent quality programming, so just press that subscribe button and we can keep on doing that and we can get the word out and let other people know as well. Rui, do we have a question of the day? Of course we have. If you could add just one, just one, non-budget card to this deck, which card would that be? You can leave your answers in the comments below this video. Yeah, well, that's it. So, uh, thanks for watching. I'm David. And I'm Ruud. And this was Budget MTG Decks. We'd like to say a special thank you to Clonehead for making the awesome Narset video for us. If you want to see excellent Magic the Gathering gameplay videos, just click on the left button below. It will take you straight to one of his Commander gameplay videos featuring Narset.